Welcome to Three Bros Podcast, episode 43, because I screwed up your last sultry voice. <laughs> like I said. Can you do that? You know that? So, uh, we need a sultry voice. So, I'm so... The article that Chad posted, Chad, do you want to go ahead and start it off, or do you want me to just run with this? Yeah, man, okay, sprint away, brother. It. All right. So, Chad posted this article this week. Usually, I say it's things that we get triggered by, but thankfully, it is not this week. But anyways, we get an article um, basically about how BBC is working to strengthen trust and transparency in online news. Uh, they just write this whole article about how they're trying to fight back against, uh, which, I mean, no matter what side of the political spectrum you are, what kind of person you are, you know, misinformation is a problem. Everybody knows that. So it seems like they just wrote this to um, solidify the idea that they are impartial, right? So my question for you guys is, and this is the first thing I thought of when reading this, what is your guys' favorite news source and why? Like, it's a good question to ask. I've never asked you guys. Um, it seems that the things that Chad posts, it might be BBC, but I'll let him talk later. Um, mine I know is your P answer is true. Go ahead. No, you can speculate. That's fine. Go for it. <laughs> I was going to say Yahoo News, but <laughs> obviously. I was Dude, kidding. at work, some sites are blocked. Yahoo News is, is a blessing. All right. <laughs> You gotta. You... <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, for me, it's PBS, man. I watch the news hour a lot. Um, I just think PBS does a good job of delivering information and then letting you th critically think about, you know, what's going on and delivering it in a way that you can trust that they don't have a dog in the fight, right? Like they're just like, this is happening. The only time they ever get political or they get opinionated is when they bring people on panels, and even those people are are not i don't want to say so bad but um not as biased as some other talking heads that we've known to grow and love slash hate in the last few years so i just love pbs man i i just think they do a good job of of just trying to deliver news and let you kind of parse out what you want to feel from it um so and, and i read this one part of that article that that really hit me they said we are open to acknowledging mistakes and that's actually, I feel like, a rare thing in this day and age. A lot of these people, uh, not p these people, but a lot of sources that you can get stuff from, they don't, like, they 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 see it in their best interest to not share news, right? So if you go on YouTube or Google search, like, Fox News and Trump, you might, fi you, you might find a lot of stuff where, like, they don't suppress it all, but they don't highlight things that make the Trump administration look bad, right? And the same goes for probably MSNBC and the Obama years. I, I fully probably admit that. You know, that's that's true. Um, but I don't. It just doesn't feel like not just Fox News, but a lot of places don't like to acknowledge mistakes, right? We live in this age where it's almost like giving away part of not even your art. Not that that's an argument there, but like people just want to highlight what makes their opinions look good like a good example is and I, I i should post this because i'm referencing it i did read an article the other day it matters where it's from i can't remember um i don't think it was too left slanted i hope where i read this but you know i read that when scott pruitt was fired fox news just ran scott pruitt resigned and didn't they didn't really highlight like why and like all the crappy things right. he definitely did no matter who you are you can agree a lot of things he did were shady and weird and crappy and they just said he resigned, you know, and moved on to like the next guy that's going to be in there. And, you know, I think when we talk about freedom and, and we talk about delivering of information and news, uh, it definitely you can definitely make a counter argument that says like, well, you should have the freedom to report what you want. And I understand that. But, you know, when you don't give people both sides of the story or all sides of the story, it gets tough to have an informed population. So, you know, that that it's that was. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you can finish. I was just going to say that we are opening to acknowledges, acknowledging mistakes just made me instantly give a lot of respect to BBC, right? That's what I'm looking for. So that's a big deal to me. Sure. I mean, any self-respecting news organization should be correcting mistakes and making it very obvious. I mean, I know um, right. I've seen some examples of Fox News retracting things, but sort of making very little notice of it. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, I, I will say that what though, I would look for from the BBC, though. What's that? Like, it's one thing to say, to Chad's point, right? 
other news sources do retract things. They do apologize for mistakes. They but do. It's not, but it's not. Hey, by the way, yesterday we screwed. Right. This up. We would like to correct it. You know, I think it's ringing. actually what's interesting. Like if you read the newspaper, the one thing that you can get from the newspaper though is there's always a section of shit they fucked up from the last issue. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody else does that. Like like if I watch. I mean, I could be wrong, but typically whenever I've seen like Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maddow or anyone on Fox or any of these like talking heads that are on TV that have a one hour show, they don't start their show with, by the way, what I fucked up yesterday was, and then continue on with the, the day's news, right? They don't do that. Right. It's always back page to Chad's point there, but continue. Chad. So, I mean, so what are you guys' favorite sources? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and continue, Chad, before that. Oh, I was just going to say real quick, um, sometimes I'll see some news break that's very disfavorable for the Trump administration, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll go to Breitbart just to go to the comment section, just to, just to feel the pulse about how this is being received. And I tell you what, they, I, I couldn't name you any specific examples, but there have been a, a bunch of times where it's just a buried news article. Like, it's not front page, it's not big news like you would expect it to be, or even it's it's just not even reported on at all, which is crazy. It's like Breitbart is intentionally suppressing bad press. Right. Right. I mean, that's just one example that just mm-hmm. came to my mind immediately. But uh, I'm also I think you're I think you do when you look in those comments in Breitbart, I think you do put your finger on the pulse of Trump's hardest supporters. Um, oh. But I think, you know, Breitbart itself isn't as bad as the comment section of Breitbart. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Breitbart itself, mm. I think pretty bad, but the you comment section... some of the opinion pieces of Breitbart. Well, though. sure. I don't want to, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's not great. Mm-hmm. It's very clear whose team they're playing for in terms of just, instead of just reporting the news, they're very clearly playing for each side. And like, obviously every media organization does that but breitbart it's that's like their main profit machine is just pandering to that specific audience right it's unfortunate and and i'd like to point out that the bbc is uh government funded i mean they pay a tax in the uk to fund the bbc and i think there's something to be said about subscription-based news being way better than advertising based models of of news reporting Yes, so that being was, said, yeah. how many subscription-based news uh, things do you subscribe, do you support currently? Great point. Well, I pay taxes. I read NPR, so that's that counts. Exactly. Got them. Exactly. It does. It does. It does. I'm not saying it doesn't. So, I'm merely asking a question. No, <laughs> Neil brings up a great point. So defensive. My goodness. <laughs> I think everything I, I had to attack. ask you was like an attack. It's I not. thought it was really an attack. Because right now, right. if you don't count NPR, <laughs> I pay for no news source whatsoever. Yeah, neither and do like, I. Right now, I'm, I'm like really friendly. considering, like, wait a minute. To be fair, the BBC is funded like through taxes as well. you, and it's not something that you're choosing to... Right. Pay yeah. for. I so, think that's the key here. With, and, and my question yeah. would be actually, well, I've got a question after this, but go ahead, Zero. I was going to say can we, in this day and age, when things are so, when information is so much easier and easier to obtain, whether it's factual or not, can we trust human beings to do their due diligence and pay for subscriptions when so many things are free? I don't think so. And so I was going to bring this up. It's one of my notes. I didn't want to bring it up too early because I don't want to sound like too much of a communist. But yeah, BBC is public, right? And pu- Wait a is public. You bastard. I, I'm making a joke. <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> but no, BBC is public and BBC is public. So I, I, this is one of the, the arenas of government that I think is a positive thing for sure. I think as we move forward, government's job should be – the government literally should be society coming together and deciding, hey, this is not a good thing. Like, we've got to figure this out, right? Like, we come together and we say, we agree that something's detrimental to society and we try to fix it, right? And so when we look at news and we look at human being impulses, like, they're not going to pay for it. And I think we have to admit that. And I think it's a good idea, not for a government to dominate media where this isn't North Korea, but to just have its own standalone, well, let's public funded. Then. Sure, go ahead. And let's talk about Russia today. So Let's talk about Chinese press, because you immediately went to North Korea, and I would 
I would pause you and say, okay, what about there's things Russia? in between? What about right. China? What about so? Know? What do you mean by that? Well, do you watch Russia today? Do you believe right. their news sources? Like, what? Where, right, where right. do you draw that line? So those governments are author way more authoritarian. That matters. That context matters yes. a whole bunch. Okay. So having said but that, what happens if our government sure. becomes authoritarian at some point? I don't believe that's ever going to happen. I, th I think I, I think the idea really of a BBC or an NPR is that it they still are competes with by the public. Like the government just redirects those funds, but then they are independent completely from the government itself. Correct. That, RTs could have right. to maintain that integrity. Right. Otherwise, it's just state television. Right. Sure. It's the idea that you try to to make sure object good objective journalism gets funded by funding it obviously like i just said but also removing it from being <laughs> yeah, influenced it. by government right but also pbs and bbc compete with private news organizations too and that's fine that's a great thing right. i think competition i love competition so that's great i just i think that in this day and age but they usually do, compete with yeah. advertising based I types of news outlets sure sure so you have to be more sensationalist you have Click to 80. You gotta sell. You gotta, yeah, capture no. people's attention. You, that's the that's the that's the benefit of being a public entity that's funded. You don't have to depend right, on that's advertising what I'm revenue, right? And that's good. And that's good. And and if we can keep PBS going, it'll at least be a something you can point to to say like, look, this is the right, not necessarily the right thing to do, but like this objectivity in this like, not having to be beholden to advertisers to the. I'm going to get a little aggressive here. Koch brothers or George Soros for both sides. I like to add both sides in there. You know, uh, not being not not being funded by them, not not being influenced by anything. You just get the right. funding and you're allowed to do what you do. And we've got to keep that around. Anytime the Republicans well, bring up, let's cut PBS, it, it definitely makes me cringe. It def and they've done that. Especially and, when it's such a know, small sure. budget and like it the is. entirety <laughs> of even just the discretionary spending. Right. So I, um, you know, I I think it's a it's a it's a good shining star to have there. No, we don't want to be RT or China's news, of course not. But we're not authoritarianism, and I don't I don't perceive. Well, even the private here. market can do it. I think we'll see a, a bit sure. more of a return of people paying for their news subscriptions. I think so. I, I mean, I I think that'll come back to some extent, at least. Mm -hmm. I think so, but I think if someone's argument is let's just trust that people will do the right thing, I hate that argument every time. And that's kind of what you're telling me right now. Like, hey, let's trust people will pay for subscription and really care about. No, people just. And I don't blame human beings for being emotional and knee jerky. That's that's like what it's, you can't control that. Like unless you're data, you're not going to control that. So, you know, admitting that we are not perfect and trying to work with that problem is what we should be doing. You know, yeah. so can I um, go ahead? I don't know if we're going to move on in a moment here, but I'd like to. Just read off some of these um, ads that come up when I am looking at Breitbart. Oh, go ahead. And I think I, I, I think it's going to give us an idea of. Wait, give me a give me a chance to speculate what they are really quick. Sure, brainstorm. Wait, actually, hang on. Let me. Let me get a... sure. Yeah, these are these are advertisements on. Let's see. I'm just going to click on any article. The Daily Stormer. The Daily Stormer has advertisements on Breitbart. <laughs> You guys know what the Daily Star is? Don't Google yeah. it. I don't know okay. What that is. <laughs> it's a are you guys uh, white supremacist are you gonna, website? Are you guess? No, I was joking. Go ahead. Oh, I'm gonna guess that it's that preacher that was selling the um, chili in a bucket that can last for 40 years. <laughs> Jim, oh, Baker. God, Jim, Jim Baker. Jim Baker. Yeah. Who's advertising on on those sites? Jim <laughs> Pastor Jim Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> Nailed it, dude. You've been practicing that. I can ah, tell. Dude, I love those videos. <laughs> Walmart cameras caught shoppers doing the unthinkable. And it's just a picture of some lady in a cart. Right, okay. Next one. Look closely. <laughs> Spring breakers who definitely have some regrets. These are advertisements. Clickbaity advertisements. Just, just a picture of some guy getting arrested who is very specifically Hispanic looking and then two white girls in bikinis just posing behind him. Oddly <laughs> <laughs> all right uh yeah, but i think it's one. the same for every single one like if you go to any site that's what they all are right no these are a particular breed of just just cancerous advertisements i suppose i've seen these <laughs> though, <to some laughs> on yahoo 
Which I mean, go to, uh, I was yeah. gonna say, yeah, go to go to any other site that has like Google AdWords or AdSense. Yep. Three out of four Democrats yep. don't want seniors to claim congressional checks. Why would that? Why? Three out of four Democrats. What don't is a want congressional seniors. check? I don't. I don't <laughs> Does know. Does anybody know Social Security? Is that what they mean? I've already clicked on it, dude. Oh no, terrible! Put <laughs> some money into this. So, Damn them! <laughs> these forty-four congressmen don't care about the death of Social Security. Democrats? Wait right. a minute! I'm so confused. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I get also the here. point. Like, what can I make somebody so irate with? Sure. That's just crazy, isn't uh, it? I feel like that says bad. so much about their target audience. Just, These just, just right on that. Just right on that ad itself. I I I perceive Breitbart to be a right wing site, right? I don't think anybody could disagree right. with that. And so the idea, or the fact that there's ads on their website that. And Caleb's right. It might just be random ads from Google AdSense or some crap. Maybe they have no control over it. But the fact that they, they do, There's they are kind of supporting but... Social Security in that ad is like weird. It's uh, kind of ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I was what I'm gonna saying. say because it's like <laughs> what I'm saying. But somehow still laying it at the feet of Democrats. Interesting. Now, just because someone the mental right, gymnastic is right doesn't mean they want to cut Social Security. Let's get that straight. But Breitbart is very right. So that is very confusing. So yeah, that's not an ad you think. Yeah. So let me think. let's go back to Sir's original question. Yeah, sorry, I just needed to do that. Right. I needed to flesh that out, man. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> sorry, go which on. is Chad? What do you what do you consume for news? Oh well, I mean BBC. Uh, BBC. I mean yeah. it's sometimes NPR, but I sure. I particularly like BBC <clears throat> just because they're a bit more objective, re reporting on American politics and issues because they aren't an American news source i suppose i mean obviously there's still some biases there but i don't know i think they do a pretty good job i'd agree with that and then i troll breitbart comments just to, to get my fill <laughs> right it's those are my uh news habits <laughs> how about yourself brother so oh go ahead uh so in the past year i've gone from you know cable regular cable news networks to yeah. reading websites like the intercept i don't know if you guys are familiar i've sent you guys articles from the intercept before you have mm -hmm. uh, glenn, glenn greenwald site who i who i feel has done very good independent journalism um to now um i use google hangouts i use whatever articles you boys send me <laughs> oh sure uh, i think i think it, it to Caleb's point it does get to a point where it's almost like <laughs> I, I do trust PBS in totality, but I do also let's not kid ourselves. We get news from a lot of places, right? Like I go on Reddit, an aggregate website and click on stuff. So, oh, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I yeah. do get some of that. To there. Caleb's point, if I see some random stuff on the Internet and then I see something you or Caleb post, I'm definitely going to get have more skepticism for the stuff that I just randomly see on the Internet. Right. Like I trust you guys. I know you guys. See, for me, it's not right. a trust thing. Trust it's me. a this must be relevant in some way, shape, or form to the things sure. we typically talk about, so I'm going to care to read it. The problem I feel right. like controlling the sites, if you will, is sometimes you run into stuff that you do not care about. Actually, it's like 95% of it. Like, yeah. I don't care to read this article. It's not interesting. Fuck this. Whereas well, what's nice about having two brothers like you two is that when you guys find those articles, it's instantly fed to me. What, 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 what about it if you not care? Well, just uh, go ahead. Go to CNN right now, right? Go to. Go I agree to with you. And I have something what, to say about that. What is the top what six articles? Read them off right now. Jay. I don't know. CNN, CNN breaking trash. news, latest news, and videos. Oh, Supreme Court. It's going to be the Supreme Court crap. It's a bad night for it, but. No, it's not. It's a perfect example. Like, how much information <laughs> do I need to know to know, okay, he picked this person? A uh, 91 year old man beaten with brick told, Go back to your country. Uh, Trump nominates Brett Kavanaugh. Eight of 12 boys on soccer team rescued from Thai caves. Oh, that's good news. Um, this, but my, my point here is, is that of that, New Jersey woman on oxygen dies after the power company shuts off her electricity. Listen to this one. And you Top guys five. probably know what issue I'll have with this CNN headline. Lie. Oh, hang on. If confirmed, Kavanaugh will be 108th white man to sit on Supreme Court. Like, why do you have to put white man in there? I, I don't understand. Like, what? I don't care. It doesn't. 
Well, you don't, but other people, the people who I care about his Dan character, care I don't about care about his skin color. What the yeah, hell? Like, people who read Dan and care about that. Yeah, I care fair. about that. You know, that's you're, you're just like with Breitbart. You're pandering to a sure. particular audience. Sure. No, I think I think they're um. The real quick, my, to finish my yeah. point, what, what I'm yeah, saying here is, is that the reason why I use you two as natural filters is because there is a bunch of shit I don't want to read and I don't care about. Sure. Right. That's what's well, difficult is sifting through what I actually a need to know and b actually even care about. Yeah. To another extent, though, I know if I post any type of bullshit, you guys are both going to call me out on it. So there's a there's a <laughs> it's kept even. You know what I mean? But that's that's like, like the throw... natural balance. If if you know I'm gonna call bullshit on an article, you're you're not really gonna post it, right? Well, I'm you're just gonna, gonna be a bit generally more critical about what I put. Yeah, right. Well, that's yeah, what I'm saying. I agree with that. And, and for yeah. me, I, that means I get a very natural, organic source of curated <laughs> material. Think <laughs> right. about it. That's true. And that's what I feel like <clears throat> Twitter strives to be in some way. Like I'm gonna look at what you like, what you follow, what you you know. I don't know if sub- subscribe is the right word, but. I'm going to look at all that and I'm going to try and build an algorithm that does what my two brothers and I do on Google Hangouts. Right. Is get you curated material that you care to actually read. Now, mm, well, that also, you could feed into an echo chamber that way, though. You can. You can. Which is why it's so I important like to do have that two brothers that will scrutinize the shit out of everything. Right. As well as. Just you know, waiting, sometimes... waiting for one of you two to be wrong. You know what I mean? I'm like, ooh, I'll call, I'll call you. Chad's out. always, Chad's always trying to gotcha. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, you're doing. <laughs> like, we're all you guys trying to gotcha, same, right? Yeah, exactly. 100. No, yes, but we don't do gotcha in a way that's like disrespectful. And what I see a lot in, not in society. Oh, yeah. I don't see it in society. Society is still normal. It's cable news talking heads that are out of control, right? Mm-mm. I go Mm-mm. throughout the day. Okay, go ahead. It's, Tell it's me why. General media. Go. General media. Okay, fine. That's fair. General media, and it's probably, look, media, and this brings me to what my last bullet point on this article that Chad had. Media now is, media in the 1950s is different than media now. Media now is whatever the hell anybody wants to do, right? We get to record every week. I I get to use this free SoundCloud service where I can just like upload and I have to pay a dick. And we get to (laughs) upload these podcasts. It's so easy to do. Shout out to SoundCloud. I wrote, this, I wrote this down as I was. Oh, thank you, SoundCloud. Thanks I wrote for this not down making us pay as, with penises. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. That'd be tough. Yeah, that'd be tough. No, well, but I wrote, sure as a bull, <laughs> I wrote this down as a bullet point. It was Should we be surprised now that information isn't. Should we be surprised about all of this misinformation since information isn't really controlled at all? Not saying it needs to be controlled. I'm just saying we shouldn't be surprised that, you know, I think in the 50s, we still had the same. Look, human beings are what they are, right? Evolutions took a long time to create us. We don't just change our stripes in 50 years. But 50 years ago, news was newsrooms and editors and taking a day before you publish things and taking time before you publish things and having people scrutinize you, and it was professional. It's not that way anymore. It doesn't have to be that at all anymore. And so that's where it gets tough, and that's where it goes back to paid subscribers. You know, Nowadays, you can just click send, post, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I don't want to say, I'm never going to say people are, people are sheep, right? Even I'm sheep sometimes. We're all, we're all a little biased. Some of us do better than others. So I think 50 years ago, it was easier to not be a sheep to misinformation because the way that information was distributed was a lot more controlled and more professional. Now it's not. So you can be a sheep a lot easier, right? And just like, Click on what we talk about echo chambers all the time. Just click on what you like and what you want to see and what reinforces you. And that's tough. That's a really tough thing to fight, especially that's a tough thing to fight when we talk about freedom. I think most of us, freedom. whether we're liberal or conservative, want to conserve freedoms as much as possible. But when we look at misinformation and we look at the harm it's doing, like it gets tough. I don't have a solution. I'm just saying it does get tough. So build a website that has two articles for every issue. That's not a bad idea. You mean like um, dissenting sides on each issue? Yep. Sure. That's just well idea. written dissenting. That's not I mean, I just, just built a website with no visitors. <laughs> right. Essentially. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ooh, in this two, media environment, I will, get you get I will get two visitors. 
<laughs> well, I don't know, Free dude. I, I you know, I'm still preferential to the BBC. Oh, dear God. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just I, surprised. I can't be surprised. Would be. To me, it's more so the... Um, this goes back to... I forget which play this is in. I think... I believe it's Shakespeare. Oh, shit, I forget. But anyway, <clears throat> it's something that to me has always been. Pro- I took a English 101 like lit class, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, in every college 101 class, I feel like you always have to read fucking Shakespeare. Sure. I I'm gonna to. have to do some homework to find out which one it is. But in one of the things, it's two guys and they're they're walking and they're talking about how some asshole. Is, and I'm paraphrasing in a modern, you know, language. Sure. <laughs> Some asshole invented the book by the printing press. Now any dickweed with five dollars can print a book. And and these two guys are just complaining about all the all the shit that it's gonna cause because like now any idiot can print whatever the fuck they want. Like sure. what's happening to the integrity of our information with We've this printing with this, press? Right. We've been dealing with this problem for a long time. It's just easier to be that problem today. My point here, though, is that over the course of time, we've gotten to the point where you can flesh out, like, okay, if I want a certain type of book, I can probably go to this publisher, or I can go to right. this author, or I can go to this person, right? Or I can go to this group. I, and I believe over the case, over time, the, the, the media wild, wild west of the internet will end up being something similar, right? And I think you're seeing that starting to be Hopefully. fleshed out. It will. I mean, I will by by virtue of net neutrality is gone, dude. Everything's in the air. Well, I mean, okay. I don't That's know. I get what you're saying. Uh, I do. I do agree. A fair statement. statement. But go ahead. My point uh, here is is that it's a it's it's a it's growing pains. A new man. technology with an old problem. Yeah, it's growing pains. Yes, I think we'll true. I think we'll get past this. It's just really bad right now. I think I think I was talking to my buddy about this over the weekend. I think and I think I've said this to you guys many a time. The internet and instant communication is going to be a good thing in the long run. We're just having a hard time grappling with it now. I don't know how long that long run is going to need to be. And I hope that in the meantime, we don't destroy ourselves as humanity, which I think I'm not saying it's going to happen. We're going to destroy ourselves, but like, you know, the percentage of destroying ourselves is rising. <laughs> We're not out of the weeds things. yet. We're definitely We're not, not out of the weeds yet. There you go. That's the right way to say it. Chad. Thank you. <laughs> not out of the weeds yet. And so I hope, <clears throat> um, that we can get there and we can flesh out uh, how, how, how to deal with all this. And I think when we talk about human beings, we're talking about people who, like I said earlier, have evolved over many, 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 many millions of years. Controversial opinion. It's not. <laughs> and if, if it is a controversial, controversial opinion to you, that's fine. Come talk to me. But anyways, um, so the, the, idea, the idea that human beings can grapple especially ones that were born and dealt with society before we had the instant um, communication, the idea that they can just grapple with it in a positive way, which, I mean, I guess that's objective saying positive, but deal with it in a way that's helpful to society is just, we never, we never should have expected that. This is an insanely um, advanceful technology that just flips everything on its head. And the idea that, those of us who have evolved over that tremendous amount of time can just grapple with it and deal with it in the right positive way for society. It was, is not right. It's just dumb. Like, so I think, and this might actually be a controversial opinion, but I don't care. I think that people who came before the internet have a hard time fleshing out. And I'm about to call our mother out fleshing out what's fake and what's not. And I don't know. I, I don't want to say I don't know what the problem is because obviously I'm I'm pointing to one of the problems being that they weren't used to it and now all of a sudden they have it, right? Um, but like mom will tell me about stuff that is just flat out not true. I apologize to you, mom, but you're never going to hear this, so it doesn't matter. But she just tells me stuff that's flat out not true. Like, and I have to sit there and just be like, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm never the kind of person that, tries to win arguments by shouting and shoving a person to the floor. I don't do that. I just, I just nudge mom. Right. I'm just like, really mom? Like, why? Like, why do you think that's true? Like, does that make sense? You know, but she sticks to her guns, you know, 
Just because like, people don't want to be proven wrong. Like, that's also a, a human. Yes. There's a lot of variables there, sure. Sure. There's a lot of variables that go into it. That's one of them. Um, For me, I would point out something when we're talking about information and how it's going to evolve. Mm -hmm. I look at something like, do you remember back in grade school, high school, right? What source were you not allowed to use? Uh, Wikipedia. 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 And in a mere few years, what does everyone use? You you, you <laughs> well, still, still technically can't technically, cite Wikipedia, yeah. but sure. Wikipedia... <laughs> hang on, but here's the thing what you can do. Sure. And I've done this for papers, and I'm hit here to admit it. Yeah, this is you can't what I do. cite Wikipedia, but Wikipedia cites actual academic sources. You go to those sources. Yeah. What did Wikipedia so, effectively take over? The encyclopedia business. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's interactive. A celebrity and, dies and it's updated on their Wikipedia page and, maybe 12 minutes later. Yeah, seriously. Ludicrous. No, that's a good thing because it's it's the right information being spread, right? That's a good thing. Um, I think this is the argument I was posing to my, to my buddy who I was talking about this over the weekend. Um, it'll be good in the long run because with instant communication, with the instant ability to see and experience and perceive different cultures all around the world, it will ex it will help people be more understanding to other cultures. It will help people see that other human beings are just that, human beings. And we shouldn't be treating them like shit. We shouldn't be, be racist. We shouldn't be putting people in buckets and being hateful. And I think that if you grow up in the 50s in a Midwest town, and by the way, I don't blame this person for this because environment is a big deal. I'm not interested in blaming people for, for the things that they believe or, or, or do. If you grow up in the 50s in a town with no black people and there's a strong sentiment towards black people are different and like we don't like them, what, what are you going to end up believing? right? Or, but the internet allows you, TV, the internet, all these things allow you to see and experience a black culture and say, these people are human beings struggling every day to survive just like me and you. And, and, and that's what's going, that's, there's probably many variables, I hope at least, that will make the internet be a positive change on society. That's a big one, right? Being exposed. If you're not exposed to other cultures, people tend to behave full. People tend, and I don't blame them, they tend to protect their own. They tend to say, this feels different. This doesn't feel like what I'm used to. I don't like it, right? But now that we have these things, we can instantly connect with someone anywhere in the world. We can instantly see different cultures. I can go click on YouTube and see people travel through different countries and talk to people, and it gets instantly translated. These are good things in the long run. So I, I hope we get out of the weeds, in Chad's words. We'll see. Well, we either are or we're going to come crashing down pretty hard, but it's oh, going to be one or the other. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so we... we we might live long enough to see the beginning of that crash. I, I doubt it, though. I think we're gonna. Or I think the beginning of that. Maybe Natalie will. Surge. Maybe maybe that generation will. We'll see. I don't know. I think you're not sure. giving our generation enough credit. Like, well, we live. Listen, hold on. We lived in a world where you had to adapt to change. Yes. Right. We instantly went from. I can speak for myself. Texting girls on your track phone. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Didn't even have to look at it. Matter of fact, I'm <laughs> I'm skipping so much. Aim, bro. Okay. Oh yeah. Aim, Aim right. right. Sure. We used LimeWire, which was like, I read this the other day. Um, it was like having unprotected unprotected sex with the internet. It was the computer. <laughs> That's the a LimeWire. So <laughs> ordinarily accurate. You would ruin <laughs> your computer for like one episode of South Park. That was really grainy. <laughs> Be honest. That one porno you wanted to see that was grainy. Don't say South Park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. You know, I'm just trying to keep it professional. <laughs> oh, that's not wrong. We'll leave that to the BBC. <laughs> anyway. Wow. <laughs> wow. My point is, though, is that our generation, more than any generation in history, has had to adapt to so much technological change and societal change, I would say. <clears throat> that we are the generation and the generation after us that are going to be the best suited to use this to the greatest advantage. And not just this, but any technology that comes out know. hereafter. You underestimate the kids that are growing up right now, though. Like, they oh. know what touch screen is from... They know what, like, technology is How from... How does he underestimate? That's what he's saying. Yeah, They're going to be used to it. 
Oh, well, distinctly, the people growing up right now are a distinctively different generation than millennials. Sure. Well, right. look, we what I'm saying so is that about. you were talking about just the touchscreen, son. In like three weeks, it's going to be all virtual reality in my brain or some, you know what I mean? Like, right. you think technology is just going to slow down right now? No, it's going it's no. to get faster. I think it's going to get really fast by the time we're kind of stepping off the stage. I think it'll be your kids that'll see that ex that real explosion into You're something. You're underestimating crazy. the amount of explosion I, that maybe. we've already been through. I, maybe. I, and I agree but with you. But you're Caleb. underestimating it because you're going through it. You know how to deal with it, so it's not a big deal to you. Mm -hmm. Pick someone up in the 1800s and have them try to grow up with what they know in the 1800s in the 90s. Like, they're fucked. <laughs> hard. Dude, dude. It's super hard. But because we grew up that way, because it's what we know, mm -hmm. right? And and quite frankly, it's it's what we're going to teach our kids as well. Mm-hmm. Your kids are going to be able to do it even, like you said, right? Ten times faster, even more, better. Yeah. Our kids will will either be playing in the ashes of civilization or on another planet in our solar system. It's going to be one uh, or the other. I think we'll be, well, we'll still be on Probably the former. I don't think it'll be in ashes and we'll still be on this planet. What? If it's your kids, if things My are going kids? the way they're going right now, we'll be Natalie? on. We'll be on. Not specifically Natalie, I suppose. It's more of a... Well, that's my kid. <laughs> no, no, I know, but I'm saying that generation, those children who are children now, of which they're either going to be dealing one. with horrible repercussions of whatever happened, or they're going to be enjoying a, a I take a that crazy so much boom in, uh... with a grain of salt, because like... I'm saying either or. I'm not saying... Either one is more likely or not no, likely. No, no, no. Well, what I'm saying is you're coming from such extremes. Like, why can't we just continue to just have fast-moving technology? And not well, because there's a lot of repercussions. We're kind of slowly catching up to us right now. Yeah, but that's always, that's climate always change. been a thing. Right, and I just said uh, those are growing pains. I talked about those, but I'm hoping that we can... And I think we will. Are we, we going to come to the... I think... Asteroid, no, maybe... Wait a minute. And when I say hope, it could sink us. That's Wait, not wrong. There was a, there was a big asteroid. War. Like, that was a huge fucking deal in the 50s. You know how close we came to just it's still shit out of our own planet? We still are not too far away from that. There are still nukes sure. that are armed and ready to go right now. Right, yes. but my point here is, is that we did come from the brink of destroying life as we know it. Right. I just think What's you're a little more of a brink back then. I think it you're was. a little too optimistic. I think you know there's an asteroid that passed very close to. Uh... Damn, Chad, stop being pessimistic, then. No, no, it, honestly, right there, that point, Chad. We are more likely, in my opinion, to be killed by 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 the universe by way of a comet or an asteroid. I believe than by ourselves. Mm. I think we both have a pretty good. Pretty. I think good we have a higher likelihood of an asteroid it. smashing our so, population out of fifty thousand people. If I could push back on that. Sure. I think. <laughs> I mean, you how can't. Does, how does how does Caleb feel about climate change? Because this is a problem, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the idea that we were able I share to that evolve. Same opinion, to be clear. Okay, sure. And and this was going to be my point. That that is to be fair. I, I that's that's I understand that. But I didn't, you know, make you. I didn't want to make you out to be a skeptic or anything. But I think. Um, but you did. We we it's taken. <laughs> Better. Thing. If if the universe was going to kill us, it could have done it. Like it, 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 evolution has come a long, beautiful way mm -hmm. to create us, right? A lot of time. So, and what that was going to be? Oh, hang on, the okay, universe gives us shit about what we are, hold what on. we become, and what we. I, I, I don't. Okay, I continue. Let the yeah. man finish. Apologies. So, <laughs> it's been millions, hundreds of millions, maybe longer of years. The universe tried to defeat life on this planet. It didn't, and, and it outpopped us. And we're extremely lucky to be here. We all can admit that, right? Life on this planet, for some reason, it's in the Goldilocks zone. There's thousands, millions of reasons why we're here. It's incredible. If you backwards take a look at the luck, it's impossible. Um, Incredulous. We could kill ourselves with climate change in a much more smaller timetable. So why does Caleb think the universe is a bigger threat than climate change? Because I believe that the people we have on this planet have the ability, just like we did in, in, in nuclear war, to bring us right back from the bleeding brink of actual destruction. I, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. 
Let me make that very clear. Sure. I'm not going to come out of this but it will not end humanity as we know it. That's, and I think that's, that's a good argument. Point. Yeah. Uh, whenever I talk to, as Chad puts his finger on the pulse of Breitbart, um, I have plenty of friends who are who are pretty conservative, uh, very smart guys who, I'm. They're not climate change deniers. They're not. They're 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 more our age. They're more. You know. They're not climate change deniers. But they, they definitely do talk about the practical effects of of not using oil anymore and make good arguments and. And that's what I and that's what I tell them too. I meet them halfway. I'm like, okay, like I got you. You're not wrong. When when we talk about energy, we can't just stop using oil. That's super. It's just literally impossible. We're not going to do that. Um, it's not impossible. So so yeah, it is I, this is this many is, people this, will die. This is the freight. Yeah, right. You want <laughs> you want you want seven billion people on this planet, or do you want two hundred million? Like, come on now. And that's right. Um, Ask the elites, dude. This is what I always end that uh, that conversation with. To I be fair, say, Chad. Yeah. I, I end that. I end that conversation with, "We're gonna need to science our way out of this, right?" Mm -hmm. Like, gone are the days of. And I don't think you know, you know. I've heard some. I mean, Caleb's definitely voiced. I'm not gonna say crazy. A little bit of disdain for the Al Gore's mm -hmm. of the world. I don't have any disdain for them. I think these people were, you know, we could we could pick at the fuel they used while they were trying to, you know, advocate for climate change. But but these people were trying to do the right thing. And I think when we look at the science, they're not wrong. We have to take that in consideration. But where they are, kind of, pat, we're past the we're past the point of like we can fix this by just cutting back or, and and that well, combined. No, I think we are, and, and and that combined with the fact that like, well, not just that alone because people can have arguments against that, and I get that. Um, but that combined with the fact that the, the practical part of it, right? Like we're not just going to tomorrow all of a sudden cut our CO2 to where it needs to be. We're not right. That's gotta be a part of the conversation. Yeah, but so we can make strides these to guys get there is, in like hang 10 hang to 15 on. years. What, hang on. What I always tell these guys is we're going to need to science our way out of this. And they agree with me. People who disagree with me on a lot of things because they're much more conservative than I am. We can agree on, Hey, we really need to figure this out. And I think Caleb's right. We talk about the intelligence and the inno innovation of this planet and human beings. I believe we can, uh, but we need to invest in doing so. And I don't think we are. That's the, that's a problem. Until yeah. people die, we won't. That's so sad. That is, that is true. so sad. We will start seeing and I think it you're right. going pretty quickly. I think. We will. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Dude, Chad, people, hurricanes, which are no question linked to warmer oceans. Literally, that's how they're formed. Are killing people already so you know. you know what's interesting though Cyril is last year was the first time we've had a, a bad hurricane season like that in a very long time mm -hmm. I'm not but, saying but, that but, sure as far as hurricane after hurricane after hurricane where I would I mean, where we've I would had terrible hurricanes right? crippling sure. hurricane after crippling hurricane and Chad right. is right but where I would push back on that is temperatures and oceans have been getting warmer so You're even right. one hurricane that adds to that death toll is a problem. We could have not had that happen, right? The problem so, with using oh, hurricanes as your barometer is that, of course, everyone's going to say, and, and it is true, hurricanes also happen naturally regardless, which is Come true. On. Not, but, but why do they happen naturally? Because warm water. Literally, why do they happen? Warm water evaporates quickly and causes a storm. <laughs> it's that simple. So if no, you no, make the ocean right. warmer... The temperature no, but, on planet Earth has been fluctuating for a very long time. Of course. Right, right. <laughs> and, and life will persist. Let's make this clear. If human beings perish, life will persist. Okay? It will. Maybe. You know, well, I don't know. I think that if we really go down, we're taking the whole ship with us. I don't think so, because we've literally been hit <laughs> with meteors that Maybe. kill of the, of the literal <laughs> wildlife on this planet. Down. As it long as one die. single celled organism survives and the planet okay. heals itself, <laughs> Let me it, put it will this evolve. Way. Complex sure. organisms are smoked. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Right. And they I, were... think, I think we're going to see more of more species like the polar bear disappear from our planet. Oh, that's going to happen. We're going to see. And, and when I say polar bear, I mean I'm talking a shitload of species. I'm, sure. I'm maybe a quarter of the species on this planet will be impacted, whether by rising water, losing habitat, <laughs> whether by warming climate, whether by. I mean, there's a mil I feel like there's a million ways that it's going to happen, but. It won't be until people are displaced. For example, I'll use Miami. Half of Miami is flooded. Right. Like, those waters keep rising, and they keep it's only rising. Worse. Right. It's only going to get worse. More people are going to have to move out of places like Miami. Mm -hmm. Dude. Because they can't there have been five major mass 
um, extinction or species lost events in history, right? Um, I, I remembered that from one of the classes I took. I just didn't remember when and how much. So one is the first one was 86% of species species lost in 444 million years ago. 75% of species lost 375 million years ago. 96% of species lost 251 million years ago. 80% 200 million years ago and 76, 60. So these are high numbers in life oh, recovery, sure. right? So we're talking about the end of the human being species, the end of complex intelligence. And, and you're right, Caleb, complex uh, species too. I'm pretty so, sure dolphins. But it'll persist. Be it'll persist. Like we could have been human beings yeah, long I, before I, this listen, if we didn't I, get bombarded. I hear you. I hear you. But sure. I also think though that, right, statistically speaking, one of the arguments that I that makes sense to me as to why we haven't found intelligent life on other planets yet. Is that the universe fucking ended them? <laughs> Their chance. Of this, right. Right. Why haven't we? Well, there's a high likelihood, I think, that <clears throat> anything within that zone would also have been crushed by an end, you know, an asteroid, a comet. Who knows what? You know. Sure. And to to sit here and be like, well, it's not going to happen to us. It's completely ignorant. I think. We're going to be the first. Absolutely. USA. I just USA. <laughs> threat of what we do to ourselves to be more problematic but hey I, you're not you're not you're, you're right there's much more um potential pitfalls for our species than just that i just I, that's the one i perceive as the biggest but i hope i hope not i want to be in kill's boat i want to say it's not but i i just don't know i don't i, I just don't i genuinely it. believe like think... you do that we're going to hit a point where we're going to realize and it's going to take a lot of deaths a lot of species will be lost on this planet. A lot of, a lot of habitat right. will be lost. Absolutely. But once we hit that point, we will science the shit out of it and get out of it and most likely die by a comet. Or an I agree. <laughs> we, 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 um, we, live in a, we live in a world that is extremely wealthy, extremely advanced. If all of a sudden, just like, just like when 9-11 happens, Americans all say, we're in this together, right? When we see, yeah. perceive an outside threat, humanity comes together and defeats it. Or tries to, at least. But Let me ask you a question. I think it was, Chad might know this better than I do. Like Maybe two years ago or three years ago, there was a comet that hit oh, outside of like a rural area of Russia. Oh, I remember that. Chelbinyansk. Do you remember Russia how big something? that asteroid was, Chad? I don't. Oh, I want to yeah. say it was the size of a football field. If that had hit in downtown Manhattan. Oh, it would have leveled the whole city. How do you think we as humans would have responded? Isn't that crazy? Because killing the that is, many New Yorkers. And I just use New Yorkers. It would have come example, together. But, but, oh, well, it would be crazy. What would we yeah. have done? We would, would categorize we done? every single moving object in our solar system. We, do, right? we would be like, never again. It, but because it hit outside of rural Russia, we're like, oh, right. that's fucking crazy, man. We're just like, whoa, it flattened thousands of acres of trees. That's crazy, bro. And we <laughs> right. just keep on going. Whereas, like, downtown London or, like, downtown Tokyo. <laughs> Let it hit you know Paris. I mean? Let it crush the Eiffel Tower. Oh, God, that would be, yeah. Let it destroy Beijing. Like, what do you think would happen? <laughs> It is interesting. I and I feel like that probably will be our downfall if we do happen to fail. Like if we fail to make it, it will be because we move too slowly as a collective. It it really takes us mm -hmm. like a huge wake up call. A lot of people getting injured or hurt or or something for us to go. Oh, okay, that's a bad idea. Let's try and move Sad. away from that. We're gonna get into Sad, a, yeah. a hair of a conspiracy here because I know if anyone ever listened to it, they'd be like, "Wow!" But I'm gonna point out, right, the 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 twin towers. What did we do after airplanes took down some buildings? Like, what do you think we would do if an asteroid leveled the city? We'd come together. Right. We went in and fucked up a country. How much money did we spend on fucking up? I, not even a country, two countries. How much money well, are we still spending? An asteroid is an interesting example, too, because it's not like you can stop that. But I, I understand where you're coming from. But if so, you can, though. Listen, if people die. Yeah. Thing. Meh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can, for sure. That takes a lot of planning and a lot, a lot of money, because you're about to... Uh, what, what, you're about to... Uh, what was that movie? Uh, if with you catch Bruce it, Willis? listen, hold on. <laughs> if, um, first of all... Armageddon. 
Arm Gunner, again. Got him. Gunner, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Gunner needs you to listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson on the Joe Rogan podcast. He explains know, it yeah, elegantly. Okay, go He's ahead. Like, Do you remember the dumbest fucking thing ever? Because oh, if you I'm blow sure. up an asteroid, all you're doing is turning a single bullet into a shotgun shell right back no, in there. No, that makes right. sense. That's that's Hollywood. So, did he talk about what actually yeah, we could tractor do? Tractor beam yeah. or, or gravitational pull? Putting oh yeah, that makes sense. That putting sense. something that all it has to do is just just pull just nudge it, it. Just right. enough. A yeah, that's all it's gotta that do. makes sense. And it's sure. a way more elegant solution than fucking drilling down <clears throat> titanium. That's Hollywood. It's setting fine. off a nuclear explosion. <laughs> it is. It is interesting though because, for the most part, we we're, we're mostly aware of all the planet killers that wander around the solar system. It's just those small to medium sized ones that could level cities. That if it ever, if it ever managed to do that, we genuinely would have categorized every single big enough moving object in the solar system. A whole lot of money would have been put into it. We are mm-hmm. always after the fact. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We run as slow as the slowest collective. Unfortunately, you are the weakest. And then there's the course. Goodbye, like, not goodbye, though. There's oh. like Yosemite exploding. Oh my god, yeah. That's a very <laughs> real threat. Yeah. Right, like we're all just kind of like, well, when it happens, it's gonna happen. And then <laughs> when a bunch whole... of people die, we'll we'll figure it out then. Right. Yeah. Which by the way, if that exploded, not just will a lot of people die from the explosion and from like the ensuing lava and molten rock, it'll also be from cl- blocking up the sun for an extended period oh, of time. Yeah. It'll be like so many different f- fucking up waterways yellow... for like a <clears throat> year. If Yellowstone goes, there's a very real chance that all three of us are fucked. <laughs> yeah, Living in sure. upstate New York. It's it's over. Sure. It's uh over. it's over for I'm pretty sure I read somewhere like ninety percent of human beings. Like Yellowstone's a big deal. It depends on how high, but it depends yeah. on how big that will block the it sun. It would definitely out block the a sun. A long out, time. A long for the whole planet. Sure, yeah, but like decades maybe? I mean, you could survive that. Yeah, sure. Let me just Google it real quick. I could be wrong. Just gonna hit up my aquaponic system. Yeah, dude. Oh, dear God. Here's Actually, the thing, right? And this is why I was almost <laughs> inclined to agree with Caleb earlier when he said, "If if humans go, like the the planet's basically gonna be sterilized." I think we're at a point where people have enough money and technology and research that if there was some cataclysmic worldwide event, there would be somebody hunkered down somewhere with enough resources to last them a very long time. I I believe at least. Um, and we would yeah. just. So you're telling me America. right now, the guy that happened to make a million dollars on a catfishing lure in Texas is going to be the guy that repopulates the Earth. I'm not liking those. <laughs> wow, you just you way that was way too good of a job of describing most preppers. <laughs> Serious because, preppers because, with a lot of money. Yeah. Because you have to make a shitload of money to have anything that's going to last no, you that but long. I, I think there are still like multi-billionaires that are like, why not have that in case shit were to go down? I think. Oh, for sure. But if you have that much money, you <laughs> might as well have a cataclysmic backup Armageddon plan. Just saying. I would. I, I would. Preppers joke though. <laughs> Right, no, I I understand the crowd you're talking about. Unfortunately, <laughs> the ones who are like I just also want to point out that Nat Geo did a whole show on that shit. Oh God, what has that channel become? Shame, shame. Is it worse than history? Probably not. No, no, history is the worst by far. It's, it's kind terrible. of all trash now, isn't it? Well, Discovery's up there too, but they're all owned by the same conglomerate, so it's essentially the same thing anyway. Right. Well, they're like, Discovery History, it's all... I forget what the name of the company is, but it's its all owned by the if same... If you want your there. Selena Gomez news, you go to History now. I'm like, what? Like, what the Excuse fuck me? is going on? <laughs> I'm exactly like, I remember right. when, when I first got cable <laughs> and I started watching the History Channel. Like, you get those Rasputin oh, hour-long awesome. documentaries. You're like, yo, this is fire, right? Like, but well, no. The thing is, uh, Rasputin, clearly nobody was watching that shit, though. <laughs> well, me, you, and Caleb were. But... <laughs> right, we were one of those... Maybe <laughs> one thousand viewers. Like, all right, we I gotta, still do Scour Netflix. They got some good historical documentaries, man. They do, bro. And they also have what they're really good at. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Complete side tangent, and I apologize, but they're oh, really gosh. good at dramas based in real life. So, example: Have you seen something that you thought uh, the Unabomber hunt for the Unabomber? Oh, I haven't seen that one. 
Really okay. good. Highly suggest. Uh, and right Ooh. now, Alex Googling and I are watching now. The Crown. The Crown, is like which a, is... Is that like a Game of Thrones thing? Nope. The Crown is actually based on Queen Elizabeth. Which actually, kind first. of. The Queen, well, I guess. I mean, I've never watched Game of Thrones, so I'm not really wow, sure. it's got high ratings. Very high ratings. Which one? The Crown. It's really good, dude. 95% of Google users like the show. Really good. Because again, it's been, and what I found, what I said to Alex, and this is really interesting. When we were talking about it. She's never been one that's liked history, right? History is boring to okay. her. Sure. And I said, I tell you why. It happens. I'll tell you why you like this and you hate reading a history book because the history book tells you the facts, it tells you that Queen Elizabeth became the queen at this time on this year by this archbishop, and this is what happened, right? Mm-hmm. What it doesn't tell you is how the queen was feeling, what challenges she had to overcome, what things were happening that Absolutely. made it so difficult for her at that time. And I use her as a specific example, but you could do that with anything, right? The, yep, when you watch easily. the Unabomber, the hunt for the Unabomber, you're getting the feelings of the guy who was hunting the Unabomber, the frustrations, the understanding of the inte- intelligent level, intelligence level of Ted Kaczynski. Like if you go on his Wikipedia, you see that he has a PhD in math and he's a super like a 162 I um the actual IQ, Unabomber himself. The Unabomber himself, yeah, Ted Kaczynski. Oh, I he believe went to Harvard. It. I believe it. Super insanely smart guy, right? But you don't get a sense of that reading the history book. What you get the sense of is seeing the depiction of him at Harvard and how he became the Unabomber. You get that through the depiction of his frustration with technology and and life as it was at that time. Like that's things that history books don't get that people fucking just love consume more than anything is i need to understand why this was a big deal and how do i do that other i mean you explain what's going on and what you could do is for a lot of people they're like shit what would i do in that situation like no kidding it was hard for queen elizabeth sure. like her father died nobody trained her on how to be the queen and then all of a sudden she has to deal with uh her just sister wanting to marry me. a commoner and you're just like oh man like fuck man how do you tell your sister she can't marry the person she wants to marry you love who you love no i understand it's the time period matters for the monarchy at that time and and the show does a really good job kind of depicting like why it was so difficult and like oh okay this makes more sense to me this is interesting i want to know more about queen elizabeth even though she's 92 years old yeah we live in different times because prince harry is a social justice warrior for marrying a divorcee american or actually well, Canadian, sorry. So Canadian. here's the thing. Who's in, half black? In, in this Who's is half, black? Who's Who's half black? But here's the thing. Here's what's really interesting is that you're watching this. And what I learned, and I did not know this from watching the show, is that Queen Elizabeth's uncle, King Edward the Seventh or some shit, I don't know, I don't remember the numbers, actually abdicated the crown for that exact reason, Cyril. Yeah, I, I've read about that. But you get a sense of what that meant when you're watching the show. You understand the serious implication of what he did. I can't believe I remember that. I must have read that years ago. I can't. I must have been like a Wikipedia hole or something that I just like read about some. Yeah, he just renounced his. Uh, he renounced status the throne. To, yeah. Right. For wow. for a woman he loved. Good for him. I hope and they at least in, stayed in together the whole time. But they did. <laughs> Oh, good for them. They did. They stayed together the whole time. Until I'll, tell you something. I'll tell you something before you finish. Yep. That guy for renouncing his throne and being a more commoner than he was supposed to be was probably happier than a lot of royals when they die. He was happier when he died because he made the right choices in life as opposed but to other people. But you see, when you're watching that show, this is where, again, I'm going to continue to circle back to this because it's so, so important. Mm-hmm. You see what he had to suffer through <gasps> Excuse me, right. to do that. Right. His mother, Queen Mary, hated him for doing that. His mother hated him for doing that. And I'm going to say this too. I, you know, of course, no offense, because I love sure. our family. I love you guys a lot. I don't consider blood family. I consider someone who actually is genuine and cares about your well-being. That's family. We're lucky enough. We're blessed enough to have a family that. We're blood and we care for each other a lot and we do anything for each other. But not everybody's blessed to have that. Family doesn't have to mean blood. Family is where you're happy. Who cares for you? Who genuinely cares for you? It could be whoever, man. It really could be. 
And I believe that. I sure do. So I've heard I've had I've got a lot of friends. I work with uh, a, a woman who grew up in a traditionally Muslim neighborhood in Chicago who she's getting a divorce right now. She's going through it. We talk about it a lot. Um, she's getting a divorce from, from someone who mistreated her for years and it was a set up marriage that she didn't want to do, you know, like these things matter, man. These things matter a lot. So family is not have to mean blood His and her family treats her like, you know, not like crap, but they, People will do things, whether they're blood or not, that make you realize they don't actually genuinely care about you. And that's not family. Sure. Not. Sure. So I hear you. Yo, also, reading Ted Kaczynski's Wikipedia page is fascinating. Bro. Holy oh, crap. Crazy. Math Bro. prodigy. I'm about it. Okay. Right? Like Genius. Abandoned Genius that IQ. Sure. Abandoned everything to live in the woods in Montana. I'm reading it's that. Been, yeah. Essentially 15, 20 years bombing the shit out of people. Which. Abandoning everything to live in the woods. Yeah. As long as you had, a, as long as I had a little bit of social contact, like that sounds kind of pretty cool. And when um, you watch the show, which I'm assuming yeah. you're going to do at some point now, because I've piqued your Definitely. interest. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> is you see, he spends a ton of time in the library, the local mm -hmm. like Montana or whatever library, you know, and, and what you see and what I find interesting is that struggle of, of of this FBI agent being like, okay, like like you got to go to jail. This is a bad thing. But at the same time, I understand where you're coming from. I get right. what you're trying to do. It's wrong, but I get what you're trying to do. And in one example he makes when he's talking is he's sitting, and this was Ted Kaczynski's manifesto, and I plan on reading it at some point just because I I want to know what drove a man to do something like really quickly he issued a social critique opposing industrialization and advancing nature-centered form of anarchism go ahead yep that's exactly what he did yep and he talked about how he used the card as, as an example right he said the car was supposed to make us free it was supposed to give us freedom yet yet if you don't have a car today you are not actually free are you think about that so his argument is what? restrictive. It's actually restrictive. It so is it because so technology mm -hmm. was sold to us as something that would make us more free? Yet we are no more free than we're less free than we were. Is it restrictive because it's a privilege that some poorer people might not have, and now their freedom to participate in the same way that other privileged people have is less? Exactly. Okay. That's one of the many ways that this it's guy was a communist. Good. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was. But specifically in his he was way more than that, ways. though, he had some ways, crazy but... beliefs in terms he of did. like returning he... to a very basic existence of just sustaining like Native yourself. American existence or something like just a hunter gatherer, basically sure. just just sure. day to day survival of finding food, basically. But to him, that was crazy. his interpretation of true freedom. Right. But that's kind of just I hear you, but. What's wonderful about living in this country is that yeah, you can right. do that if you want. We might you're allowed to believe cookie, that. But... You're not allowed to blow up governmental buildings. And you're not allowed to blow up. Well, he didn't just go blow up governmental buildings. He blew up all sorts of shit. Universities and airlines, I guess. Those yeah. were his first targets, which gave oh, him sure. which gave him the moniker of the Unabomber because he would bomb I'm reading uh, that, yeah. universities right. and airplanes, I think. Yep, you're or right. airlines. I can't remember. Yeah, but he did he kill anyone before uh, the one at uh, that government building? Wow, this is uh, fascinating. I think FBI? the death of that one was like the kicker of okay, we need to catch this guy. Right, he issued a social critique anonymously, mm -hmm. and the government published it in the hopes that someone would catch his writing style, and his brother did. Yep. It it's fascinating, dude. And it actually talks wow. about. Um, wow, would you guys be able to tell it was me through a, a manifesto I wrote? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think this is, I don't know. <laughs> I think I, well, I mean, these guys lived in times where we didn't have such mass media. Maybe like he read his writing. Who knows? I don't know. Right. It's, it's exactly what certain references. Actually, actually, one of the many ways that he was caught or at least narrowed down to who it was, was that mm -hmm. in his manifesto, the way that he referenced his material was something that was only referenced that that style you know how we have MLA referencing and AP referencing and 
there's different styles of referencing sure. your works cited your works cited page. Mm -hmm. You guys know what I'm talking about or no? I don't. You know yeah, how to do a like works cited work page, yes? Oh yeah, of course. Like, uh, and there's rules. Yeah, you, there's rules you have to follow for it. To oh be yeah, 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 yeah. The rules that he used were only used for like an eight year period, so they knew that whoever did this was in a university during that time. So that helped oh. narrow down the people I'm that sure. could have done this or specifically wrote the manifesto. It's just sure. interesting how they, you know what I mean? Because yeah, the truth be told, if it wasn't for his brother, mm -hmm. we probably would not have, I mean, many more people would have died and maybe we would have never caught Ted Kaczynski. Mm -hmm. and, and even more interesting... Because of course, when I watch something like this, I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to read more. What else is he? Well, like, where is he now? What's going on? He is in a supermax prison in Colorado, I believe. Okay. And the two people that were on his like bay that he could talk to once in a while for half an hour a day, because mm -hmm. that's all the free time you get in that supermax, Makes was sense. Timothy McVeigh. Oh dear God. And I forget the guy's name. Ah, oh, it's gonna piss me off. But the guy who blew up the World Trade Centers the first time. Oh gosh, what's his name? It's killing me right now. Fuck. Anyways, pardon my French. But anyway, those two guys. That was until obviously Timothy McVeigh was killed in like 1992 or some shit like that. But those were his compadres for like the longest time. Can you imagine the conversations that were being had? Ra Ram about Whoa, I didn't know who did the what WTC bombing. Ramzi Youssef, Iyad yes, yeah, Ismail. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Ramzi Youssef? Okay. Yep. Wow. Man, I, I mean, these are people what? You know what? These people are but... disgusting and despicable, but man, would I love to be a fly on the wall for that half an hour. I'm sorry. <laughs> That'd be fascinating. I mean, these people just, they all share the same idea that Right. just reality is is despicable just like you and have I'm, to destroy it somehow you have to whatever it is that that they're viewing the world through why do we they hate what exists that? and they have to destroy what? some part of it caleb this is more for you because you Crazy. saw a whole series on it like why did he think that way why did he think that society was so detrimental is it because so, not everybody had equality of opportunity or something because that's kind of what it sounded like before um but. there's there's a lot i mean he has like a 53 page manifesto that was sure. eventually printed in the <clears throat> times maybe maybe we should read that and we'll do our live pod next month on that but go ahead we should but anyway <laughs> that um, would be interesting that would be <laughs> um, but, but, but we do that there, there's a lot of factors that he has in there and i'm trying to go back and remember because i watched this thing like three months four months ago and then, of course, I naturally did a whole bunch of random reading on him article. I would have too. Whatnot. So, yeah. Um, what was the question again? Sorry. Just why you think they wanted to tear society down? Like, did it say in the series, like, like why they thought reality was so terrible it needed to just end? I, I mean, I guess that's not what what Ted Kaczynski thought. He thought we need to go back to a different kind of lifestyle. But like, what was so bad about modern society? Like, what? Well, again, for what? him, it was it was the idea of freedom. Like, what is freedom? And at one point, the the main character, the FBI guy who caught him, you, you're filming. They're filming him, and he's sitting in a car, and he's at a red light, hmm. and he's at a red light, and it's like two in the morning, and nobody else is there. And he's looking up at the red light, and he's looking at it, and he's like, "I am obeying a machine, a light." I could just go through this. I know it's safe. Nobody else is around. Yet mm -hmm. I choose to sit here at a red light. Like, wh where has my freedom gone? I'm obeying a machine. <sighs> and I, I right, hold There's on. Before yeah. you get crazy, sure. if you take out the any level of understanding of like safety and like, yes, you could run right. that red light there and be safe, but you can't do it on a highway. Right. That's not his point. His point is, is that we right. are becoming slaves to a machine. We spend all of our time, and, and I mean, if he <clears throat> was walking around with us today, he would be even more infuriated with the amount he of. He would be so mad, yeah. oh, you yeah. know. Like, but Fuck. at the same time, yes. even though he obviously has some sort of mental issue, obviously he views the world in a very negative way. You can't argue, and I think this is what is appealing to a lot of guys who end up down this road somewhere is that 
not everything they say is necessarily wrong. We just don't agree with how you went about getting your message out there. As opposed to what, though? Being a slave to nature? I'm sorry, but that's just... It's just, I just still think it's a bad argument. Being a slave I, I, to what? Surviving day to day? No, no, I can't defend the argument. Yourself In against fact, predator. what we should do is we should all read the manifesto and talk about yeah, it. But that'd be fascinating. I but, think we definitely should do that. <laughs> that would be interesting. So, and this is what I'm going to do too. This is going to be a little bit of a of a change of direction, real quick, because we'll sure. end soon. But yeah, we do need. So that. I'm reading Ted Kaczynski's Wikipedia page, and it says he's going <clears> to. <throat> Life sentence without possibility of parole, right? Eight consecutive, well, eight consecutive life sentences. I don't even know what that means. It's stupid. Without the possibility of parole. Got it. So I, I was like, eh. First thing that hit my mind, I'm like, I'm curious. Let me just Google life sentence for nonviolent offenses. And I immediately stumble across an article that's these 32 people are spending their lives in prison for nonviolent crimes, right? And the first guy is like three different nonviolent drug possessions. He's spending life in prison. He is spending the same amount of time as Ted Kaczynski for mm -hmm. nonviolent, non-threatening to other human being offenses. Despicable. You fucking suck, United States justice system. I'm sorry. That is absolutely abhorrent. USA. That needs to change. Here's the problem with USA, okay, with our with our justice <laughs> system, is that I feel like, and I could be completely wrong, but the feeling for me is that it's just as political as it is judicial. It's not supposed to be. It's not, but it, that's the feeling. <laughs> I know. That's the feeling. And look, for me. as a society, I get you know, you know, I, I I've heard since Trump was able to pick another Supreme Court guy, he's like, I'm looking for someone who he said this right at the beginning of the broadcast tonight, right? I'm looking for someone who will interpret the Constitution literally as written. I cringe at that. Does anybody else cringe at that? Because as a society, as a society that has created a government that we can make amendments to, we shouldn't be following something that's as written in 1770, or sorry, the Constitution was 1782, something like that. We shouldn't be following a, a, a paper document exactly as written from back then. You know what like just popped in my head as you were saying that? That's crazy. Go ahead. So here in America, a lot of people laugh at the idea of a monarchy in Britain, right? Good for us. Right? Do, do we, is that a kind of a thing? Like, why do you have a queen? Like, why, why do you have a I think why a lot of have... people are obsessed with the monarchy, but carry on. Well, from a, yeah. from a political perspective, from, you know, I think a lot of people I, at this point. Okay. Okay. And yeah. this is what I'll say, Chad, because you're, you're probably right. There are a lot of people that are obsessed with it. And that's, that's definitely true. My feeling is, and I could be completely wrong, is that those people who would laugh at the fact that they have a king are also the same people that would completely listen and, and read the Constitution word for word as it is written. Those are the same people, I feel like, that are like, well, the Second Amendment is the same. That's how it's written. That's what we're doing. Right. Yet at the same time, in the same breath, you laugh at the idea of a monarchy. It doesn't. It's It's a little confusing. That's what I'll say about it. It's a little confusing. And I am not here to say that, dude, I'm not here to say that, like, we need to rip it up and rewrite. And that's not going to come on now. Well, no, it's exactly what you just said. We have the Amend. ability to have amendments. Correct. Oh, yeah, the amendments. It's a living, right, we, breathing document. I think it's supposed to be. One of the big things the forefathers sought or did well was the idea that, like, create a society that has boundaries, but also recognize that there needs to be a, a, a way to, you know, change and grow. And, you know, as we progress, make those amendments. And it's just like, come on, why can't we do that? Why can't we do that? It's ridiculous. What was the last we amendment, have, by the way, we have that was passed? Does anybody know? Great question. Look, the 27th Amendment was in 1992 and it was congressional compensation those turd burglars it should have been stop voting yourself pay raises don't well, look at it to me it's the <laughs> date of ratification completed oh okay I'm was in 1992 okay date that it was submitted for ratification september 25th 1789 mm -hmm. 202 years What? Delays laws affecting congressional salary 
from taking effect until after the next election of representatives. It was submitted September 25th, 1789, and was not ratified until May 5th, 1992. What the heck? That's the proposed crazy. Congressional Pay Amendment was largely forgotten until 1982, when Gregory Watson, as a 19-year-old sophomore, wrote in his college term paper that the amendment could still be ratified. After his paper had been returned with a C grade by his professor, Sharon Waite, because she <laughs> thought it couldn't be done, Watson was motivated to launch a nationwide campaign to complete its ratification. The amendment eventually became part of the United States Constitution, effective May 5th, 1992, completing a record-setting ratification period of 202 years, 7 months, and 10 days. And then he walked <laughs> back into that classroom and slapped her in the face. <laughs> and just <laughs> dropped his dick on the table. <laughs> like, this is me. <laughs> Wow. What are you holding in your hand, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for my A. I'll wait. You know what, though? What a baller. And, a, and, and of course, it's all our opinion, how we perceive things. I perceive things as a, this as a great thing. Like, good for this guy. Good night. Like, oh, my gosh. That's crazy. That's fucking hilarious. All right. We can clean it up here. Unless anybody else has... Uh, Gregory Watson is a United States... He's an American, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Did anybody? Uh, I'm gonna Wikipedia him real quick. What's yeah, we could we could uh, Gregory Watson. I don't know if he'll have a wiki page, but he definitely did something with his paper. You get a C. Oh, really? Watch this. Throws the. Watch oh, this oh. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute. It's got a C. Da, 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 da. So it took him 10 years. It happened 10 years later, though. So anyways, that's that's why when when and it's it's I'm not sitting here saying like Trump. Chad, is... there's more to the story. Oh, go in ahead. 2016, Zachary Elkins, a professor in the government or the Department of Government, became interested in Watson's story and began to document its origins. He tracked down Sharon Waite, who had left academia in the 1980s to run a citrus farm in the Rio Grande Valley. Elkins suggested to Waite that they change Watson's grade. In 2017, Elkins submitted a grain change form with Waite's signature and changed oh it my God. to an A. They wanted <laughs> to give him an A+, plus, but they couldn't because the university doesn't do anything higher than an A. Right. <laughs> in Fuck 2017. Me. That's incredible. That's pretty cool. So some That's asshole cool. like us found this story and was like, oh, for sure. I need to write this wrong. I am going yeah. to put the shit out of this professor until she changes Sharon that to a way. Well, that's cool. And, and and maybe she took it in good spirits. Who knows? Like She was probably like, yeah, you're right. Like It got passed. She's I was a wrong. citrus farmer. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. We can do this. Well, that's probably also that's probably that's what makes the most sense. But <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but she also could have been like, yeah, look, I was wrong. No big deal. Sure, right. Like, fair yeah. enough. He did get yeah. it done. Took him 10 Bro, years. If somebody but... came back to me like that and I was a professor, I'd be like, yes. I'd have yeah, to step I, down. In a heartbeat. Oh, sure. I'd, I'd actually want to sit down with that reporter and the person from the, the past and just have a beer and have a conversation. Like, wow, that'd be fascinating. It's very fascinating. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Hangouts, oh. boys. Yeah, it's time. Oh, hello. Hangouts. Oh, is that his A? That is Gregory Watson receiving his change from the nice. C to an A. <laughs> Look at that guy. This guy looks like a straight goober. Oh my goodness. I'm a goofy goob. Yeah, that's that's pretty. All right, that'll wrap it up for 43. Oh, he's done more than we ever done. <laughs>